It's no secret that BC's wild salmon are facing many hardships, and some scientists even predict they could be driven to extinction in our lifetime. One of the biggest challenges, rising water temperatures caused by global warming. In the Alberni Basin on the central west coast of Vancouver Island, salmon often languish at the mouth of the Somas River in Port Alberni and delay their final journey upstream to spawn because they can't survive the warm water coming from Sprout and Great Central Lakes. A team of scientists has come up with innovative solutions that might save this and other runs, but they need funding to turn their theories into action. Linda Aylesworth reports. Sprout Lake in the Alberni Valley is known to many as the home of the mighty Martin Mars water bombers. But to many more, this and other bodies of water in the Somas Basin is famous for sockeye salmon. They defy insurmountable hardships to return here to the place where they began life so the cycle can continue. They come in Alberni Inlet, swim up Alberni Inlet, and come up, come up through the Stamp Somas Rivers, and then they'll climb into the lake, and then they'll sit in the lake for three or four months after they've entered it, and they'll just sit there and slowly mature, and then they'll spawn in the fall. Once they reach either Sprout or Great Central Lake, life is easy. It's getting here that's hard, always has been. But these days, salmon are being challenged by an added obstacle, global warming. And so you get very hot water going in the river down to Port Alberni and to the Alberni Inlet. So the sockeye, when they come up into that warm water, if it's over about 24 degrees, they just die instantly. They just can't handle the heat. More and more often, the sockeye must wait at the river's mouth in Alberni Inlet. It's a problem because before the 1970s, the local mill discharged wood waste into the harbour, which to this day consumes oxygen out of the water as it rots. The salmon are waiting down in the harbor because they don't want to come into the river because it's too hot. Then they get trapped in a low oxygen environment, so they're sort of damned if they do and damned if they don't. The end result, sockeye that don't survive to spawn. Climate change and the impacts associated with it are only going to worsen in the years ahead. If we don't do anything, we run the risk of losing uh, sockeye stocks as well as other salmon runs, not only on the Somas, but on other river systems around the province too. Which is why a team of scientists are working together, along with the Living Rivers organization, to find ways to help salmon adapt to climate change. One idea involves piping cold water from deep within the lakes down the river. Sounds simple, but... You sit down on a napkin and draw it, the hard part is, is making sure it happens. And, and nobody's tried to upwell this much cold water inducted into a river before and have it work. Another innovative idea involves helping the sockeye navigate through particularly difficult obstacles like fish ladders, something they usually don't attempt at night. They just either can't see their way or they get lost in the turbulence and they actually end up as pinch points. And when that means they're in the river longer, they're more susceptible to, to mortality when those water temperatures increase. A potential solution? Turn night into day. We did a lighting experiment last year at Stamp Falls and uh, some pretty startling results. We were seeing between 5 and 15 fold increases in migration at night when the lights were on. Kevin is also involved in a tagging project. 3,000 returning sockeye have had these tiny devices implanted in their bellies, allowing researchers to record when the animals pass various antennas set up along their journey upstream. We know that that fish with this code went through on the 29th of June at uh, 4.43 p.m. We're just hoping to understand more about the behavior of these sockeye in the Somas watershed specifically. We want to relate their migration time to things like barometric pressure and water temperature, the two biggest factors. The cost of lowering river temperatures by piping cold water from depths, lighting up sections of the river at night, and continuing the tagging program would be about $1 million. An investment they hope the government can be persuaded to make. Sure, that'll entail a, an upfront capital cost, but it'll only be a small fraction of the annual ongoing value of the sockeye run that we have here. A run that is the largest on Vancouver Island, the third largest in the province. One that is worth up to $10 million a year to tourism and the fishing industry, but is invaluable in so many other ways. 
my hope is that that our children and theirs will be able to come to this river years from now and see sockeye in mass swimming up river as we've seen today and if that happens uh, i think that'll be wonderful i think that'll say a lot for the fact that we chose to do the right thing when we could